Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Today we will have a look at AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. AES is our standard for encryption and it is older than 20 years now. And up to this day, no meaningful attacks have been found that reduce the security of AES significantly. In this video, we will discuss the basic parts of AES, the building blocks, and we will learn how all these work together. We structured this video into seven different parts. In the first part, we will discuss the history of the advanced encryption standard and how it was created. After that, we will see a brief overview of the AES cipher. Then we will have a look at the building blocks, namely add round key, subbytes, shift rows, and mixed columns. And finally, we will discuss the key expansion of AES in short. The key expansion is uh, not a detailed part of this video. I think we will create another video especially about the key expansion. The history of the advanced encryption standard. In January 2, 1997, the US Department of Commerce put the search for accessor algorithm of DES, our data encryption standard, out to international tender with the US National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, leading the selection. So at that time, people knew that the DES, the data encryption standard, was not secure enough anymore. So the need for a new encryption standard was there. And the really incredible thing is that they put out a tender for the search for a successor algorithm of DES. DES was more or less constructed in secret and with AES, they wanted to have it completely open to everyone and to be as transparent as possible. And I think this is really amazing. On April 15, 1997, following an international conference, the final request for proposal was issued. So they designed this tender and on that conference they even discussed what they really want and what they really needed. And the winner of the tender, which was to be defined as the Advanced Encryption Standard or AES, had to meet the following criteria. At first, AES must be a symmetric block cipher. That means that a block of data goes into the cipher and the encryption or decryption comes out as the same block size. So we have always a block that is encrypted. And this block must use, or AES must use 128-bit blocks. Then AES must be able to use 128-bit, 192-bit and 256-bit keys. So three different key sizes. AES should be equally this easy to implement in hardware and software. This was also a problem with DES. DES was easy to implement in, in hardware, but it was not difficult, but not very performant in software. AES shall have superior performance in both hardware and software. This is what I meant. DES was not so fast in software, but fast in hardware. AES shall have superior performance in both. AES should be able to withstand all known methods of crypt analysis. This, this is of course true. When we create a new cipher, it should withstand all methods of crypt analysis. Furthermore, it should be suitable for implementations that are secure against power and timing attacks. These are attacks that are not attacks directly against the cipher, but against the implementations, and it should be possible to make it secure against such power and timing attacks. And especially for the use in smart cards, low resources shall be required for AES. That means the code length and memory requirements should be small. And finally, of course, the algorithm must be free of patent claims and it must be usable by anyone free of charge. So that means that AES can be used worldwide. I think this is really nice. It was not only intended for the US uh, market or for the United States. It was intended to be used by everyone. So it has to be free and uh, usable by anyone free of charge. In July 15, 1998, the tender ended and led to 15 proposals in total. 
So 15 groups of researchers and companies and so on submitted their proposal for a new cipher, for a new standard cipher. And from August 20 to 22, 1998, on the so-called AES conference in Ventura, California, all proposals were analyzed. And five candidates, namely Mars, RC6, Rindel, Serpent and Two Fish, fulfilled all requirements and advanced to the next round in the AES competition. And the Rindel algorithm by Joan Damon and Vincent Ryman had proven to be very fast in hardware and software. And indeed, this then got the new AES. And the performance of this algorithm today is really incredible. For instance, on a AMD Ryzen 7 1800X, only on a single core and using the AES-NI, that is the assembler instruction set for the AES cipher, this machine can encrypt using AES 128-bit Galois counter mode with 3 gigabytes per second. So you can encrypt with AES today 3, 3 gigabytes per second. I think this is really amazing. In May 2000, all tests and public discussions uh, on the AES conference came to an end. And as I already said, on October the 2nd, 2000, the Belgian algorithm Rindel by Damon and Ryman was declared the winner. And in, uh, the, the algorithm impressed with its simplicity, security and speed. And to this day, this competition, the AES competition, to find a new successor of DES is considered exemplary. So finding a crypto primitive or algorithm by a competition and to make it open as it was, was really a new thing. And later competitions were all inspired by this AES competition. And here, this link below is quite interesting. If you're interested in performance of the AES, I added this to this slide. Now let's talk about AES. And at first, we see here an overview of the AES cipher. And the AES cipher is not very complex. As, as I have already said, it's a quite simple cipher, more or less simple, as you will see, because we only have four different building blocks, or five when you count the key expansion also. So we have an at round key building block, we have sub bytes, shift rows, mixed columns, and at round key. And here you see the same colors, this is also the same sub bytes, shift rows, and at round key. So what these building blocks all do in detail, we will see on the later slides. Here you see also the key expansion. So you put in a key into the cipher and then the key is expanded to different so-called round keys. So we have nine, 11 or 13 rounds here in the middle and one additional round. This is based also on the key length. So with 128 bit, we have 10 rounds. With 192 bit, we have 12 rounds. And with 256 bit key size, we have 14 rounds. Why do we only see 9, 11 or 13 here? We have first these 9, 11 or 13 same rounds. And in the last, last round, you can see that the mixed column step is missing. That's here the final round. And the round keys go into the add round key function. So we have the initial round key. Then we have nine round keys that go into this loop here. And we have the final or the last round key that goes again in this add round key. But you have always these, three, these four different building blocks that repeat here. So it's a quite, as I said, simple cipher, you can say. And AES itself has this, what, what they call, the inventors called, the state. The state is a 16 bytes array. And usually they display the state when they put it, for instance, into graphics like this grid here. So you have four times four grid of 16 bytes. This is the internal state of AES. And the internal state is the plain or ciphertext. So you put in the plain text here, a block that has to be encrypted or decrypted. This is then the state. And the state goes through all these building blocks, through the loop here, through these building blocks, and then the ciphertext comes out. Of course, when you want to decrypt something, you put the ciphertext here in. And then for all these building blocks, you have inverse building blocks that fulfill the opposite of these. So 
instead of substituting the bytes with the S box, for instance, it would substitute them during the decryption using the inverse S box. What this means, we will see on the next slides. So let's have a look at the details of the building blocks. The first building block we have to discuss is the add round key building block. And <laughs> it's quite simple. It adds one round key to the current state array. So adding means it XORs the round key with the current state. And the round key are, or the round keys are 16 bytes round keys. And the current state is always 16 bytes. How does this look like? Here's an example. We have an example state here. And all these numbers here are just hexadecimal numbers. And we took this, this example from an original AES implementation that we have in Crypt 2 So we added a key and a, a plain text, and then we used the implementation in Crypt 2 to encrypt. And this is one add round key example. So we have this state here. It gets XORed with the round key array. And in the end, we get a new state. And these bytes here are XORed. For example, the first byte of our state. We have B8, B8 XOR90. This is 28. This is all hex, hexadecimal. And when we have a look at the binary values here, we see that we have 1011, 1000. This, this here is, is B. This is 8 here. And then we have here XOR and this is 1001, this is 9, and of course, four zeros for the rows. And in the end, we have 0010, this is 2, and we have 1000, this is 8. And XOR just means that when we have here 1 and here 1, we get a 0. And if we have a 0 and a 1, or 1 and a 0, we get the 1 again. For instance, we have here on this position, uh, what, what do we have here on this position, we have a 1 here, and we have a zero here, so we get a one here. This is how this XORing works. So the add round key building block only XORs the current state with the current round key. Now let's have a look at the sub bytes building block. And the sub bytes building block is the substitution building block of AES. Keep in mind that AES is still a so-called substitution permutation network. That means it only is built of substitution building blocks and permutation building blocks. This is a so-called SPN network. We already had videos about SPN networks on this channel. So if you're interested in details on F uh, SPN ciphers, have a look at this video. And in the sub bytes building block of AES, it substitutes each of the 16 bytes of the state using the AES S box. And the AES S box is just a huge lookup table. And when you want to substitute using the S box, you go byte for byte through our current state. You look at this byte here. You search in the S box for that corresponding position, for instance, here 2 and 8. So these are also hex values here 2 and 8. And the S box then returns 34. And then we put the 34 here. Same for all the other bytes. And as I said, here is an example as for the S box, one byte of the state, S box of 28 equals 34. By the way, when you want to actually really learn how to or how AES works, you should program it by yourself. Before I created this video, I implemented AES in C sharp and the English Wikipedia has a nice set of articles about AES. For instance, here about the Rindel. So the Rindel is AES S box. And you can just go to Wikipedia and you can program it down like this. Now you could ask yourself, how did they create this S box? As, a, as someone who implements a cipher, you just take this as a lookup table. Of course, the inventors of the AES implemented the S box that it is secure. There are a lot of properties that these S boxes in the modern ciphers have to fulfill. And they designed this S box that all the properties are fulfilled. Of course, these properties are no um, part of this video. Maybe in, the, in one of the later videos, I will create a video about S box design. But for implementation, you just need this nice lookup table to implement subbytes. Now let's have a look at the shift rows building block of AES. 
and the shift rows building block is one permutation in AES. And it shifts the second, the third, and the fourth row of the state. So here's an example how this works. You have the initial state that goes into the shift rows building block. And then you can see this here. So everything in the second row is shifted one to the left. Here, the D8 goes out of the row. Then the third row is shifted two to the left. So these 0D and 44 go out of the state. And then the fourth row is shifted three times to the left. So 1C, 3F, and 5C in our example are shifted out. And then they are put back in the same row they, are, they were in. So we have a circular shift. So the D8 is here now, the 0D and 4, 4 is here, 1C, 3F, and 5C is here in our examples. So no shift in the first round, one shift in the second, two in the third, and four in the fourth row. And this is how the permutation step shift row works. Also a very nice part in the Wikipedia article des describes this in detail. So this is shift rows. Now let's have a look at another permutation step of AES. And this is, as I think, the most complex step since it is based on, you can say, difficult math. So in detail, they created some polynomes and then they applied these polynomes on the rows and there's a lot of math in bet uh, behind that. But when you go through the math, in the end, you get this nice matrix multiplication here of a single row. So what does that mean? We have our state here with four, you could say, vectors. You interpret all these, um, not rows, columns as a vector. And then you apply this matrix here, and then you get these new values here. For example, you have a look at this vector here, 3, 4, 0, D, 6, 0, 5, A. You apply this matrix here, matrix multiplication with a single row, with this B row here, and then you get this row. So you get this row here. You do the same for the second row. So this vector here becomes this one here, this one here becomes this one here, and this one here becomes this one here. The nice thing with this matrix multiplication of a single row is that they also created inverse an inverse matrix so that you can multiply the result with the inverse matrix and you come from this state to the old state. Of course, this is needed for decryption. And in detail, it means that each column here is multiplied with an invertible matrix in Rindel's Galois field. This is not part of this video. This is what I mean with complicated math. But for implementing AES, you do not need to understand how this Galois multiplication or field multiplication works, because you can create four nice equations out of this matrix here. So you see, for instance, here's a two, three, one, one. So you have D0 here equals this Galois multiplication of B0. And, and we have here the two, so this is the two here. Plus, and the plus in our case is XOR, the Galois multiplication three of B1, that is here. This is the three B1, so three B1. Then B2 is only one, so we don't need any um, lookup here. These are lookups. I, what this means, I will describe later. And we have a one again, and we have B3 again. So we have three, uh, four values here. And the values are multiplied with this um, values here in the matrix. And these Galois multiplication methods here or lookups, these can be pre-computed as lookup tables. So when you, for instance, want to implement AES on your, on your own, you can just have a look at the Wikipedia site about Rindel mixed columns. And there you get also the lookup table. So this is really nice. So to implement the mixed column step, you only have to implement these four equations here. And then you get the mixed columns from this state as a step that you can come from this state to this new state. And of course, there are also four equations for the inverse 
uh, method so that you can come from the new state to the old state. So this, the design of this is very complex, but to understand it, you only, or to implement it, you only need these four equations here and to implement these on these um, columns here and you have implemented the mixed column step. And the mixed column step is another way to permute these um, the state here. So um, we have the substitution step and then these two permutation steps. Now we have the key expansion of AES. And the key expansion means that the key is expanded to 11 for AES 128, to 13 for AES 192, or to 15 for AES 256 round keys. Why do we need 11, 13, and 15? We have 10 rounds, but in an initial um, add, adding of the key to the internal state, so we need one more round key as we have rounds. So the key is expanded to this round keys. And this key expansion is an, is an algorithm by its own. And therefore, I did not put it or do not put it th into this video here. I think I will create a special video about the key expansion of AES in a later video. Therefore, the details are not part of this video. If you want to implement, for instance, the AES key schedule on your own, how you get these round keys from the key that you put into AES, you may have a look at the nice Wikipedia article for that. Now that we saw all building blocks of AES and how AES works, or the overview of AES and how it works, we have three tasks. The first task is that I first want to encrypt and decrypt using the AES cipher in Crypt Tool 2. So let's encrypt a text, for instance, with AES. Then I want to have a look with you at the AES visualization component in Crypt Tool 2. So this component is really helpful if you want to implement AES on your own and you want to see the different intermediate values, for instance, of the internal state. And finally, I want to also show you the visualizations of AES that we have in CryptTool online in the browser. I think these are also very helpful and really nice, and we will have a brief look also at these. So at first, let's go to CryptTool 2 and encrypt with AES. I'm here now in the current nightly build of CryptTool 2. And as I said, the first thing we want to do is we want to encrypt using the AES cipher. And this is quite easy. You have the template section here and you just search for AES, for instance, and then we use AES cipher with text input. Here we have a nice template where you can enter text. Then you can enter the key here. I hope this is not in the way, that I'm not in the way right now. So I put the key here, I remove this one. So you have the key here. I think I changed the font to Courier yeah, and make it a little bigger. So this is a 128-bit AES key. And here we have the plain text. The plain text, of course, is um, ASCII encoded. So we have to convert the plain text to binary data that the AES component in Crypto2 understands this. This component then will return here or output also binary data. And to visualize the binary data, I use a string encoder and convert it to a hexadecimal value or hexadecimal values here. So let's press play. And I also don't like this visualization here. Let's remove the font and let's do the same here. So we have here the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And here we have AS encrypted values or the visualization of these or presentation of these as hex values. And this here is now our ciphertext. We can now copy this. And when we want to decrypt that, we, paste, we post it here. We have to change our input format to hexadecimal and our output format to text and ASCII. And we have to change the AS to decrypt. Then press play. And then we get back our the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And of course, as with all modern ciphers, when we change a bit here in our cipher text, <laughs> this block is uh, broken then, but the further or the following blocks can be decrypted. But of course, when we have a wrong key, for instance, let's change a bit here, let's change this to one, 
then the AES, okay, I stop it that you can see that nothing comes out of the AES, then it tells us the padding is invalid. That means it could decrypt this, but what comes out here is just random garbage. And when we change this, I think to ECB, we will also see, now we have to remove the padding here. We will see that, yeah, it can decrypt the text, but the result of course is no, uh, it's not the correct plain text. Yeah, and this is how you can use AES, for instance, in Crypto2 to um, encrypt text and decrypt then the cipher text. And now let's have a look at the AES visualization in Crypto2 because we have a really nice AES visualization component. That is the AES visualization component. And we can increase the size. And when we press play here, we have a hexadecimal AES key and we have the plain text that goes into this component. And I will just make this full screen. And you can step through the presentation here. It will um, tell you here, we have the, the same visualization as in my slides. We have the start, then we have the key expansion and the first step is add round key. Then we have nine, 11 or 13 rounds, sub bytes, shift rows, mix columns, add round key. And after these 9, 11, or 13 rounds, we have a final round without the mixed column step. Then we can have a look at the key expansion. And when I press auto here, it creates our first round key here. So you get the first round key. Then we can click auto again, auto, and it goes into the next uh, round. Okay, from the previous key. Okay, these are the keys. And then I say skip expansion. Now we go to the encryption of AES. So let's go to next. Here we have at first our at key uh, building block. So here we have our state matrix. This is for instance our plain or cipher text. And here below we have um, the key matrix. And when we press auto, it creates our new state, the result matrix here, using XOR on the state matrix and the key matrix. Now let's go to the next step. The next step is a sub byte step. That means we have our state matrix here, we have our S box here, and when we press auto, it, and you can, you can slow it down, it shows you the lookup in the S box. It puts the, um, the result of the S box into our new result matrix matrix. And when we increase the speed of the automatic mode, then we get our result matrix after our sub bytes building block. Now we go to the next step that is shift rows. And I think you can also click uh, through no, you can't, you can, but you can press auto here. I will slow the animation down and press auto. So we have first shift um, one block to the left, two blocks to the left and three blocks to the left. Then it puts it, the, the shifted, the left shifted blocks or, or bytes of each um, row back on the right side into our state. So we have shift to the one, shift two, shift three. Circular shifts of rows in the shift row step. Then we go to the next step. And the next step is the mix column step. This is a, a matrix lookup. So you have the multiplication matrix here on the left. You have the state, state matrix here and you have the result matrix here. And when you press auto, it takes the first row. It, multipli it, it, it multiplies everything with the, uh, the matrix here on the left side and it creates the result matrix. Then it does this for the second uh, column. We increase the, the speed. It does it with the third column and with the fourth column. And then we get our new um, state after performing the mixed column step. And then at the end of each row, we have again the add key. And when we press auto, it again XORs the current round key to our current state matrix. And this was the first round and then the AS visualization jumps to or goes to the second round. We can also go to the last round or we could go to the end. 
And in the end, our result matrix should be our ciphertext. We have 3902. Let's have a look. Uh, it's 3902 DC. Oh, here you read, you read these out column wise. You have 3925841D. 02DC09 FB. So here you have the final ciphertext after encrypting using AES in our AES visualization. And to be honest, this visualization helped me to actually implement AES by myself uh, with C sharp. And it's really nice to, for instance, enter here uh, test and test keys and plain text and then have a look at your implementation and compare the intermediate results with the results that your implementation for instance creates. And now after showing you how to encrypt and decrypt using AES in Crypt22 and our nice AES visualization in Crypt22, I want to furthermore show you two visualizations of AES that you can also use and you don't even need Cryptool 2 for that. You can just go to Cryptool Online. And I will link all the implementations below this video and I will furthermore link um, or add the links to the Wikipedia articles if you, for instance, want to implement AES on yourself. I'm here now on the Cryptool Online website on, and on in this website you can find also these two AES implementations. You just go to CTO then to CTO overview and you enter here AES. And we have here the AES step-by-step -step that I open in a new tab and we have the AES animation and we also have distributed AES analysis, but this is not part of this video. So in the AES step-by-step, -step, you have also a visualization of AES, as you can see here. You can configure, for instance, how many rounds you want to have, which version of AES you want to have. You have um, I think you could change this. AES variants. Ah, yeah, here, uh, number of rounds. When I go to 14, it goes to Rindel. Okay, no, you, you change the configuration here below. Um, you can change the number of rows. You can uh, see the S box, the permutation, and so on and so forth. Then you can enter a key and you can enter. Uh, the plain text, the input here, that is the input. And then you can have a look at each intermediate value in each round. And you can also disable steps of AES. So you can configure AES as you like. And in the end, I think you can see here the uh, final value here. So you have here the final cipher text. And then you get um, you, it also decrypts the same, and in the end, we should see the same um, plain text as we had in the beginning. So we have some zeros, one, zero, one. Let's have a look. Some zeros, one, zero, one, and in the end, says seven F, seven F. So this AES step by step, as, it, as the name suggests, allows you to step through each step of the AES, and you can see it all on this page here. And I also use this to compare my C sharp implementation that I created for this video uh, with uh, this implementation here. So I compared the values and checked if my implementation was correct. Now let's have a look at the AES animation. And this is the newest um, implementation in Crypto 2 uh, in Crypto Online uh, about AES. This was a bachelor thesis. And I think it's quite nice. So this is, you can say, like a video. And it also goes through the AES cipher step by step. You can let it run automatically. Or you can go step by step by yourself. And it really shows you in an animated way, as I have shown you in Crypto 2, but it does this in the browser. And I think this is also a really nice um, presentation of AES in a nice animated way. So you, you see here also the internal structure of AES, as I have shown you in the presentation. And 
And you will see also, for instance, we have here the sub byte step. Also the S box here, the lookups, it substitutes our internal state. Then we have our shift row step, which rotates first um, by one, then by two here, and then here it should be rotate over here three bytes. Then we have also the mix column step. I think this is also a really nice visualization of AES. And finally, we have the add round key with the XOR. And then you see <laughs> all the rounds. I think this is also really nice. And you can always pause and then you see um, the in all the values of AES um, during these um, these rounds. I think this is really nice. So we have here rounds one to five, round six to uh, 10. And we can always pause and then compare our implementation, for instance, with the reference implementation here. Here we have the key schedule that is, as I said, not part of this video here. Here we have the key expansion. So the key expansion looks like this. As I said, I will create another video about that, but it uses the sub bytes, some kind of permutation, and then fills this array here with new values. And finally, we have the finish page. Okay, and then you can view the encryption process or the key schedule again. Yeah, and this is the end of this video. Um, I wanted to show you how AES works internally. I think that we did this with the slides. Then I wanted to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using Crypt 2 with the AES component. We did this. I showed you the AES visualization of Crypt 2 which is really nice to understand AES further. And for instance, when you want to implement it on your own to compare your implementation and your internal values with these ones of the visualization. Then I showed you the step-by-step -step AES on Cryptool Online on the web page. That is also quite helpful when implementing or working with AES. And finally, I showed you the new AES animation, which also shows all the internal states of an AES uh, encryption or decryption process. Yeah, and. Um, what else do I have to say? I have to say that I think that AES is a very well-designed and um, very easy to implement algorithm when you put the math in the mixed column step by side. And maybe I will also make a video about the internals of the mixed column step. And uh, I didn't show you the key schedule. I think I will also create a video about the key scheduling or key expansion of AES in the future. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, but you're really interested in cryptology and want to learn more about cryptology, then please subscribe to this channel. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make the Crypto project more popular. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.